Estamos começando mais uma Wikimetal Happy Hour, mais uma vez com um convidado, uma convidada especialíssima diretamente da Holanda. Estou falando da minha queridíssima, da nossa queridíssima Simon Simons, from Epica. Hello, everyone. Tudo bem? Tudo bem, Simon. How are you? This is a very special day, right? Yes, it's the release of the, of the album. So we're just going to play some music while you wait for your next well, song. Well, uh, we're very honored to be talking to you and uh, on, a, on this very special day. You're releasing Omega today and, and everybody's loving it. How, how was it to you record this album in such a, a, a challenging period of, of the world? Uh, well, we were lucky with the recording of the album. Everything was finished end of February, with the exception of the lead vocals from Mark and myself. And our studio is located in the Netherlands, and Mark lives in Sicily, and I live in Germany. And we were supposed to record the lead vocals middle of March, and that's when the first lockdown came. Uh, so Mark stayed at home and recorded his vocals at his home studio, and I search for a studio nearby my house so I could go to work in the morning and be back home in the afternoon. So you're in you're in Germany now? I live in Germany since uh, a long time already, yes. And uh and but how about the videos? The videos are, are amazing and did you record all those amazing videos during the the pandemic? We recorded, uh, yes, the videos with Group of 13. Those are Abyss of Time and also the Skeleton Key, which uh, was uh, released today. We recorded that in July in Poland. That was kind of a mild phase of the pandemic. Um, we waited also a long time before booking it. We combined it with the photo shoot as well because we all have to travel from four different countries. So we wanted to make it as compact as possible. And uh, of course, a lot was done with wearing masks and keeping distance as much as we could. And uh, the song Rivers, the video was recorded in October, close to my home. Only me and uh, Jens were there and Jens was wearing his face mask all the time. And I had to just do hair and makeup and clothing by myself. So I suppose it was it was much different from from your previous works, right? Yeah, apart from the, the two videos we shot in Poland, the, the Rivers video was very, yeah, it was very, how do you say, a small team, but we made it work and it was fun. Um, but um, for me, it's always, of course, nice if we have a big team working with us. But uh, Jens and I, we had a good flow and it was just relaxed and it was fun. We were experimenting with water and lots of glitter and makeup and, Yeah, it was it was nice, nevertheless, and it also fits the song because it's a very intimate ballad. And yeah, we made uh, we came up with a pretty cool video, I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely, it's it's a challenge. But uh, once you're very creative and and uh, you have these great ideas, then you can you know uh, go beyond the 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 challenges. And uh, do you get involved in all the creation, all the concept? of the of the videos and and the ideas that you, you always have always bring great ideas you had the vlog uh this time with the with the making off of of the record and there's so many good news do, do you guys is that you and and mark who who do these uh who have these great ideas uh no it's a little bit a collaboration between the company we work with so when we decided to work with group of 13 a polish um video production team which has also worked with behemoth and uh amaranth also shot some videos around the same time as epica and um we sent them over the songs and we also discussed the lyrics what the song is about and then they we start writing kind of a, a or they create a mood board and we start to write the storyboard and we make it fit to what the lyrics are about and that's that's it that's teamwork that's uh an exchange of creative ideas between uh mark myself a group of 13 in this case but also the band you know everybody gets to have a say in it and everybody has to uh be happy with the creative process and also the end result that's great and and i know that the whole band uh helps to to write 
uh, the writing process, everybody gets involved and 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 how was this specific writing process for for this album? Did everyone participate and and uh, you're a very democratic band, I suppose, right? Yes, yeah. Um, everybody is allowed to write music. All songs will be put on a table, so to speak, and uh, we pick the best songs that we then continue working on as uh, as a band. And for this record, a thing we've done differently is that we had the sabbatical before, and in the past we were writing. Uh, a new album while we were on tour promoting the previous album so we had a very hectic schedule and after our long touring cycle for the holographic principle was finished we then took a little break from touring to write our biography and after our batteries were fully charged we then met up uh, at a house in the netherlands all six of us together with yoast we all brought our home studios so uh, we could be fully focused on creating new epic material and everybody being there at this, you know, at the same spot at the same time. And since we live in four different countries, it has been difficult for us in between a very hectic touring schedule to meet up in between as well. Um, but that's something we've done differently now and it's been very fruitful. It was a very productive week, uh, had a lot of fun and yeah, the songs came to fr fruition much faster than if we were to send each other the ideas, you know, through email back and forth. Fantastic. And uh, I know you have a, a very close relationship to, uh, with Brazil and Brazilian fans. And you've been, do you remember how many times you've been to Brazil so far? More than eight times, I think. Yeah, because uh, when I interviewed you, you're just uh, bringing the, the, for the first time, the, the, the Epica Festival to Brazil. Yeah, we've played to we've played in Brazil many times before. Uh, I remember one of the first times we went there was with Camelot, and that's already that that was two thousand five or two thousand six. And we've been to Brazil many times after that. And um, for me, it was the, the first show we had in Brazil was one of the loudest shows ever. <laughs> Uh, the, the crowd shouting the name Epica, but also shouting my name was so heartwarming. I was in the backstage and I could hear everybody like, am I hearing them correctly? Are they like shouting my name? And that was a funny th thought that as a little girl, I always dreamt about, you know, being a singer or starting a girl band. And then many years later, people would be shouting the name of my band and even my name. So. And uh, yeah, the crowd is amazing. We always get the warmest welcomes. We love the country, it's beautiful. And uh, the fans are just the best. <laughs> and you have a, a very easy name to pronounce in Portuguese. Everybody uh, is familiar with, with Simone. It's a, it's a very common name here as well. Yeah, I, I have, but I have gotten used to many different ways of pronouncing my name and uh, the band some of the band members they call me Simony because that <laughs> was, uh, my name was when I when we went to China so and I know for of course um, Brazil you speak Portuguese but in the other Latin American countries where they speak Spanish it's mostly Simon so it's without the E at the end but the way the Dutch people will pronounce it would be Simone 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 and in Germany as well, I suppose it would be the same, right? No, they, they put a Z instead of the S. They say Simone. 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 And there's another there's another fun one where they say the money, like as in the money, like the money. <laughs> the, the, the money. The money. The money, yes. And talking about your partnership with, with Mark, you, 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 you weren't a, a founding member of, of the band, but you... you you have a perfect relationship with the, with the band and, and a, a great partnership with Mark in particular. Like, uh, how was the story of 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 your meeting Mark? Is there anything uh, interesting to to share with us about the the way you guys met? Well, I know Mark more than half of my life. I think I was around fifteen, sixteen when I got in touch with him uh, on the After Forever chat on their website and um, I had a big mouth back then and I told him that I could sing even though I was still very shy but 
somehow, I don't know, when you're a teenager, your mouth is bigger than your <laughs> your actions, so to speak. And then I, uh, I got in contact with him. We talked on a phone and then I started singing for him on the phone. And then we started dating while he was still in After Forever. And um, when he quit After Forever, he wanted to start a new band. And um, we thought about me being the singer, but I was very young. I was still in high school, very shy as well. So I actually helped him find to find a singer. I was having classical vocal lessons back then. And I called my teacher and asked him, do you know any girls who want to sing in a band? So I actually helped with getting auditions for um, Sahara Dust, which was the name back then. Um, nobody came close and they worked a couple of months with Helena, but that ended in a nightmare. And then they asked me to join and I said, yes, I guess. I had a gut feeling. I, I don't know if I really wanted to. I was very scared of doing it, but I listened to my heart, so to speak. And I thought this is, you know, you sometimes have to be fearless and just go for it that is that is lucky for us that that you took that decision uh, you know the fans are very happy that that you made that that call uh and and how was the how was the beginning of your musical life did you like did you get uh was it influenced were you influenced by by your someone in your family or or friends and uh, you had of course a, a formal education in music but how did you get first get involved with with music uh well at my parents house the radio was always turned on um so i had i was listening to music um uh, from morning to the evening on sundays during breakfast my father would listen to classical music and when i was a younger child uh, my father liked one of his uh, favorite composers is Brahms, and that's very melancholic it's very heavy i always used to call it funeral music It made me very sad and it was very like heavy. Um, and my grandmother, um, the mother of my mother, always had like classic FM running in the background. And I enjoyed that very much. It was a little bit lighter classical music, the more popular um, compositions. And I, I enjoyed it very much. So when I was a younger girl, I loved to watch Disney movies. Of course, there's a lot of music in that as well. And uh, I just loved the classics, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, The Beauty and the Beast. Uh, what else? Uh, Cinderella, Al Aladdin, The Little Mermaid. Uh, I loved those very much. And I grew up as a younger girl uh, with... Uh, boy and girl groups like Backstreet Boys and Spice Girls. And my dream back then as a little girl was to start my own girl band. So um, yeah, I actually wrote my first song when I was about nine or even younger with my sister back then. And, and how about heavy music? Was that uh, on, on your radar at some point? And, and how did you get, uh, when did that came, come into your life? I was, uh, I think around 12, 13, my best friend back then, she loved to listen to rock music, bands like uh, Life, Bush, um, Nirvana, Silverchair, Radiohead. Those were a little bit the first rock bands I got in touch with. I fell in love with Garbage, which I still listen to up until this day. I actually meant to, um, managed to see them play live two times. I think 2019, I saw them in Cologne and also once in Amsterdam. And um, my first boyfriend, he was a metalhead. So that was at the age of 14. And that's when I got into the metal scene. And that was mainly black metal. And one of his friends uh, had a CD from Nightwish, which was the Angels Fall First CD. And also a CD from Tristania called Beyond the Veil. And that was the first time I got in touch with like the classical singing combined with metal music. But I also loved Lacuna Coil from the beginning uh, with Im Temptation and also After Forever. And that's a little bit how I got in touch with Mark. 
Well, uh, you mentioned some great bands and and a lot of a lot of important women that that play a very important part in in those bands. Uh, how was the how was the scene in in the Netherlands? Because it's the Netherlands. It's although it's you know in in the middle of Europe and and of course Europe is is a very important continent for for heavy music and and especially where you live now in Germany. And but did you ever think that being from Netherlands would be possible to to break in in the whole world and travel the whole world with the band and and being successful with the band? I don't know. I just like I said before, I had this gut feeling. Uh, another band I forgot to mention, which played a big part, was also The Gathering. And funny enough, it's a little bit a full circle moment today because um, both Epic and also Anneke, who was the singer of The Gathering back in the day, uh, the album that I love the most, or fell in love with this Mandelian. And I think still think up to date, it's an amazing song. I actually sang the song Strange Machines during a Christmas metal meeting many, many years ago. Um, and Annika is a great friend of mine. And today she released uh, an album, an Epica. And that's that's very funny. I would have never have thought that back in the day, listening to uh, Mandelian, you know, dreaming about maybe being a singer myself one day. And now um, both Annika and Epica released uh, their new material today, which is a funny coincidence. And she wrote to me today as well. She said, happy release day. And we send each other our albums and we stay in touch a lot. And we have a lot of fun together. We have the same vibe, you know, we get along really well. We worked with Ari and Lucas many times and we toured together. And um, yeah, there are definitely some ladies in the metal scene I've always looked up to that are now my friends, my colleagues. I respect them, I support them. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be part of the family. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned the, the bands you started listening to, the rock bands you started listening in the 90s. And today we have a very diff different uh, situation, especially in the mainstream world. Where heavy, where heavy music or, or rock music is not the the most popular musical genre. Do you think that is there any reason for that, or or is it possible for rock to become, uh, in your opinion, uh, is it possible for rock to become mainstream again, or is it would would it be good if it became uh, mainstream again? I think it just acquires too much of the listener's attention to be played in the background. You know. Metal really sucks you in, in a way. It really draws your attention. And um, uh, it's always been the underdog. And cer there are certain countries where it's actually quite popular or considered mainstream. Uh, countries like uh, Finland, for example, it's, you know, bands like, of course, the bigger ones, Nightwish, they are in the charts, they are played on the radio, and this more... Uh, woven into society. Metal is not considered uh, to be underground or the underdog and but considered worldwide it's still a little bit an underground scene but I also think that the admirers of the music scene are kind of proud of that that we are not you know part of the of the masses that we are uh, a subgenre and that we that it's kind of exclusive in a way um and maybe some some artists don't want to be played on the radio in the end you know um uh, how can i say this you're being played amongst a lot of other artists and there is of course this formula to write songs in order for you to be played on a radio but that's not how we compose our music for us uh we write the music that comes from the heart and if it's being picked up by the radio is great, but it's not something that motivates us to write the music. The motivation comes from somewhere else and that is just to create art and to hope that other people will like it as well. Yeah, I have a, I have a very close friend who's always say that uh, rock music, it's for, for the ones who deserve it. It's not for just any random person, it's for people who really deserve to 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 listen to that uh, fantastic kind of music and and uh, you know everybody uh, watching at home and and a lot of people sending messages i want to thank everybody that uh, is watching and and all the fans you have fantastic friends and when we told them that you'd be here everybody freaked out and sent a lot of questions so i really want to thank your fans and 
So I just wanted to say, I mean, everybody's bored at home and, and because of the pandemic for a year now and everybody <laughs> needs needs music and art and, and films and series and books. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask you to maybe tell us what you've been listening to, what you've been reading, any suggestions or recommendations or tips uh, that you could share with us and, and everybody who's watching. Is there any way that I can see the questions as well? Because I don't see uh, any any questions or who is online as well. Uh, you can see it. I don't know. I can, uh, well, I can if ask I, you some. If I put it on full, but I, I just see private chat maybe. Ah, all right. I switched to the comments now, so I can maybe. Well, a lot of people are saying that Omega is fantastic. I don't know if you, are you seeing me scrolling the uh, the screen down? Yeah, I, I can scroll up and down myself here. Okay. okay. Well, people. some folks from Portugal, people saying the album is amazing. Greetings from France. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some questions sent previously uh, that, uh, for example, uh, Romario asked, what do you like to read? Cookbooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like to read uh, like educational books, photography-based uh or photography related or cookbooks that's that's my kind of genre i'm a movie girl so i'm hooked to net netflix uh what i'm watching at the moment uh together with my husband is uh, how to get away with murder but i yeah. i love horror movies um like alien the whole one one till four and then the covenant and prometheus i've watched them a million times uh, i love science fiction uh yeah, so definitely a great thing to get uh, to kill time during the pandemic. Of course, I have my seven-year-old son who wants a lot of attention, and when he's not in school, so I'm home. Uh, I spend a lot of time with him. That's the big silver lining of being home a lot. And um, in the evenings, of course, Netflix is uh, turned on, and uh, music I've been enjoying listening to are two of my colleagues. In the scene, uh, one of them, Amareth and Delane. I really loved the last album from Delane and Amareth as well. Elise and I were in the studio around the same time last year, so we were in we we're anyway in touch a lot. But uh, yeah, we were sharing experiences. And when their album came out, that was October last year. I loved to listen to it while I was in the gym. The same with the Delane album. Uh, I listened to it recently again, and yeah. Besides that, my son has his own playlist, and but he takes my headphones. He's like, "Mom, I want to listen to some music." He grabs my phone and he just picks the songs himself. He's his own DJ now. And what kind of music does he listen to? Uh, he loves to listen to the soundtrack from Spider Man. He's a huge Spider Man fan. Uh. Um, he loves Beast in Black. He loves Battle Beast. And then some German acts as well. Um, from the new Epica album, his favorite song is Code of Life. We just had a little party with my parents a lot earlier to celebrate the release. That's like the biggest party we can <laughs> have at the moment. And I showed them the song Rivers and also Code of Life because that's Vincent's favorite song. Fantastic. And and other questions. People are asking about uh, your uh, what you know about Brazilian music and, and how was to uh participate on angra's secret garden album uh I, the memory i have when i was singing the song secret garden was that my son was very small and he was in the house while i was recording it in oliver's studio and he heard me singing and he wanted to come to me so i'm actually singing the song especially the last chorus while i have my son on my hip like holding him and i'm like belting out the song and he's looking at me like that's loud, but that was the only way to keep him calm. He was very little back then. And um, it's a great song. And uh, one of my daily, or not daily, I'm over-exaggerating. I wish it were daily. Walks or hikes that I do here, we live close to the forest. We call it the secret garden because when we go through the forest, we pass by a lot of hidden gardens. When people have, for example, an apartment, they don't have a garden. They can rent a little piece of land in the forest or you know in um, any green part of uh, the country and uh, they're a little bit hidden away so we call it the secret garden route 
Uh, that must be beautiful. Well, uh, there's so many beautiful spots in, in, in Europe and in Germany in particular. And, and about the pandemic, what is the great lesson that we you, that you think we should all learn from this whole situation everybody in the world is facing? I think the biggest lesson is that we should not think about ourselves, but uh, for the greater good and that we are all in this together. It's not me, me, me. It's the whole world, the whole, um, uh, you know, mankind and that everything is connected and that we need to think for more sustainable solutions to safeguard a future for um, the, uh, yeah, the younger generations. and. Uh, uh, it's it's a struggle, but something we've been including in our lyrics since the early days of Epica, but uh, one song on the album, uh, it's called Gaia, and it's a little bit of apology to our planet, to Mother Earth, so to speak, that we have been working really hard to, you know, take more than what we give in return, and that we need to re-structure um, our ways of you know our thinking and that we need to come up with solutions sustainable solutions and um, our son he's very aware aware of that already at a young age and um, I think for us as a band we have a voice a lot of people listen to so we can hopefully positively inspire uh, other people to do good and this pandemic has hopefully uh, woken up a lot of people, you know, to know that the pandemic is not, uh, that it is kind of a effect of what's been going on for decades, that it's not just coming out of the blue, you know, it's, um, and I hope that, I mean, a lot of people have shown their true face now, faces in this situation, but I do like to remind everybody that we need to think of the greater good that we all need to work together and uh, even though you think you're, it's just you picking up the trash from the from the floor or you know my husband and my son I know I'm diverting a little bit from the question but they go jogging every weekend and they came back last week with um, a bag full of garbage that they picked up after when they were finished jogging like that's something among many things that kind of uh, makes me angry seeing uh, what people just throw on the floor just without thinking about it. So yeah, try to think a little bit about the whole planet, not just yourself and the effect it has. And if a lot of people change their way of thinking, it's going to have a bigger effect in the end, a positive effect. I totally agree with you. And I think it's very important that you as an artist and, and as a role model for so many people in the world, that you share your thoughts and, and, and your opinions about this whole situation that we're all facing. And, and it's very important. This I think, in my opinion, this disease came, it's an opportunity for us to show uh, respect for others, that we care for others, because if the person next to us is not feeling well or not, not healthy, that can affect us directly. So it's a, the whole world is, it's a, it's a, it's an environment that, uh, Everybody, everybody's actions influence in, in each other's actions. So it's very important as an artist. I, I really appreciate that. Simone Simmons, uh, I really have to thank you so much because I know this is a very busy day for you, very important day for you. Epica has just released a fantastic new album. It's out there, every streaming platform in Brazil. It's, it's being released physically. Uh, it's, it's. I have no words to, to th enough to thank you so much for your time, and and I just wish you the very best for for the future, and really, really hope to see you again in Brazil as soon as possible. I hope so too. We have uh, some shows planned in December. We released uh, the official flyer poster. I think yesterday or two days ago. I'm confused with all the posts on social media we've been uh, doing lately. But yeah, it's about time we come back to Brazil. I hope that everybody is, is uh, safe and healthy. And um, I hope also that the new music will offer a lot of people a lot of support and give them strength and hope. And uh, I think music is such a powerful tool. It unites people, but it, it's also a little bit like a 
it offers a huge comfort. So I hope that our album will also be able to do that for a lot of people. Fantastic. Simone Simons from Epica on Wikimetal Happy Hour. And for sure, we'll be promoting everything that Epica does. We'll be talking about the concerts in December all the time and encouraging every single heavy metal fan and rock fan to be there and, and see you playing live, performing live. Please say hello to the rest of the band. We love the album. Hello. Omega is out everywhere. And let's keep listening to it as much as we can until we can see you live in the end of the year. That is the positive thing now with that, of course, in the past, we always go on tour right after the album's released and the audience doesn't know the new music very well. Now everybody has a chance to listen to the album a lot and practice the songs and uh, yeah, that they can really sing along when we're going to play the new songs as well. That's it, exactly. Uh, people will be knowing all the words uh, for the songs and, and December everybody will be uh, selling out, you know, the, all the shows will be sold out and, and all the fans will be there. So thank you so much for your time once again, Simone, and, and uh, I wish you all the best for the future and, and be, be healthy. Hope you stay safe. Thank you. Obrigada. <laughs>